Well, good morning. If you would take your chairs, boy, oh boy, we're getting kind of widespread. Maybe I'll pull the Pope this way a smidge. Will I throw the camera off if I do, guys? Okay, Dolly, I have to keep peeking to see you. <laughs> All right, well, good morning, and uh, welcome to our service, Pastor Bill Evans, Seven Fellowship Baptist Church. Um, we were told this week we could have 50 people inside, and sure enough, we'd have uh, 60 people come to church. Looks like we might have it this morning. Uh, so uh, we chose to be outside because the weather was supposed to be nice. And uh, not that we're trying to be fair weather Christians, but uh, I think we're kind of enjoying this. Is the, the view for me is wonderful, and uh, whatever. But we welcome you to the uh, house of the Lord, uh, and in, in His name, we come together to worship. Uh, we have a full service of kids' songs and birthday songs, and uh, I heard a story of a little fellow that just gave his heart, prayed to give his heart to Jesus this morning. Uh, we'll talk about that in our birthday time. And so let's uh, start off this morning with some kids' songs, and uh, they're not written over there, all the songs are. Somebody's input from last week, can we have the numbers written on the hymn book, from the hymn book? Who has made the fish that swim? Just in case you're cold, get your exercise. Fish that swim, flowers that grow, birds that fly, you and I. Who has made the fish that swim, the fish that swim, the fish that swim? Who has made the fish that swim, God in heaven above? Who has made the flowers that grow, the flowers that grow, the flowers that grow? Who has made the flowers that grow, God in heaven above? Who has made the birds that fly, the birds that fly, the birds that fly? Who has made the birds that fly, God in heaven above? Who has made both you and I, you and I, you and I? Who has made both you and I, God in heaven above? Who has made the fish that swim, the flowers that grow, the birds that fly? Who has made both you and I, God in heaven above? Okay, who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh, okay, come on you Sagittarius, let's see this one, okay? Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Water, water, water. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? Let me tell you. J-E-S-U-S. Yes. He's the king of me and you. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Water, water, water. Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Water, water, water. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? Let me tell you. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Yes. He's the king of me and you. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Water, water, water. Okay, birthdays. Little lady in the front seat got older this week. And we celebrated her birthday twice. Uh, uh, she come over and, and we had supper and celebrated happy birthday and then she come back on the day of her birthday. That was nice. Good to see you twice then, John. And we're not going to ask you how old you are. But uh, anyhow, we had good celebration and of course Reese made a nice cake and all that. I had to have two pieces. That cake was so good. Uh, whatever. Angel, uh, who was the other one you had here? Patience. Patience is uh, our friend from long ago. She's still our friend, but she's down in Edmonton country. She's working with the uh, uh, government on this. Uh, she works in a lab doing with viruses and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so uh, she's having a, a good time in Edmonton. Um, so, with patience, welcome for your, if you're listening in somewhere to catch up. Uh, uh, thanks for letting us know about your birthday. Okay, so uh, I've got a young fellow who said he gave his heart to the Lord this morning. This song we sing, Happy Birthday, and then we sing the second verse, and we'll talk about that. So let's sing. <coughs> Anybody else have a birthday this week? Oh, yes, Cindy was a while back. Cindy Vincent was just a while back, she said, the 24th or something like that. Anyone else? Birthdays? Okay, here we go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, only one will not do, born again through salvation, how many have you? Well, two birthdays, one where you are in your family's uh, your your house of your family who you come home from the hospital and you look like somebody and whatever and um, you learn to live and love and be like those persons 
And then when you come to know Jesus, you start to be like him. His word affects your heart, and uh, you're blessed, and uh, you're, um, you strive, and you start to just be like him. And people get the like to be around you and love you uh, because you're loving them back in Jesus' name. So that's the idea of the second birth. So we're thankful for that little person who gave his heart to the Lord this morning. And was it Sawyer? I heard, I heard it was. Yes, good. So uh, congratulations to him. Okay, we want to uh, sing some worship songs now if we can. And they're on the screen there. First thing is Jesus' name above all names. That's why we've gathered here. It's not about us. It's not about the beautiful view or anything. It's about Jesus and his name above all names. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word, Jesus, please come among us. Bring your pure spirit, fill with your love, as Emmanuel, God will be with us, our blessed Redeemer, living word. And we trust that's your prayer this morning, that Jesus will be among us here to come. And by his spirit, come down, bow the heavens, come down and bless us in our time together. And then as we've asked his presence, we want him to be exalted. Be exalted, O oh God. This uh, timing's a little funny again, and I always get the first line struggle through it. But give us a few bars of it, Karen, if you would, please. There's a runaway. We I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people. I'll sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is sure, is great to the heavens, and thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness to the clouds be exalted O God above the heavens let thy glory be over all the earth be exalted O God above the heavens let thy glory that's our desire we trust again is that would God be exalted and uh, Jesus you know just says I come to glorify my father and that's his plan and his desire and if that was Jesus plan and that needs to be ours as well so as we welcome you in the name of the Lord is that a phone ringing in here and uh, somebody grab that please Wellington <clears throat> somebody says what time is the service it's 10 uh, right now we uh, got some announcements we uh, welcome you and again with the Sega Towelites back for the summer and uh, we are having an annual business meeting after. We're going to kind of um, put some hot dogs out there. So for those who are staying for the meeting, members and or whatever, um, we'd like a report from Camp Segatau. And somebody said one of the staff members uh, should be doing that. So whoever that might be, <laughs> Brady's pointing. If you're able to stick around, we'd like to hear just what's going on at Camp Segatau, if we could. Uh, so that'll be right afterward. And after our service, is the hydro poles there in this section? You're not supposed to stand around here and visit, okay? I, I'm warning you. Uh, police officer shows up, puts you in jail, tell them I can't guard you because I'm busy today. And um, uh, anyhow, so that's you, you've been warned. But um, we did open, they did open up that we can have 50 people inside again with masks and singing and uh, not much singing, or whatever. So this is working better for us and we're, we're thankful to God for that. Um, if you use the Daily Bread magazine, there's some giant prints. One for June is still left there, the red. And the new, new ones are coming out June, July, August if you like the smaller print. They're there for you for the taking. The offering baskets are there and uh, baptist at pris.ca if you want to um, uh, donate uh, online or whatever, you may do that. 
Um, okay, uh, right. I think that's all the announcements. Do I have? Do I have other announcements that we need to have? Nothing. Okay. Well, good to have you with us. All right. Let's um, turn to the screen and sing our. Uh, we've got our numbers written down over there too. Not just the the uh, hymn numbers, but the titles of it, but just not the words Majesty. Do you want to stand up? So those of you who are standing and sitting on your chairs, just stand up and sing with this Majesty. Uh, we're doing a wedding in a couple of weeks in Alberta. Miss Ashley's getting married, and when they come down the aisle, everybody will stand, and it's just almost criminal. Don't stand up if you're in your car. If you want to step out, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem reigns. So exalt. Lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorify King of all kings. Let's just remain standing as we bow in prayer together. Father, we thank you so much for who you are, the majesty and the glory of your name. You sit above the circle of the earth. You oversee all the affairs of all the planets of the world. You've made them by a simple speaking of word. And we thank you, Father, that this one who has all this power, all this majesty, deserves all the glory we could ever think to give. He deserves all the thoughts and intentions of our heart to ever be for the uh, glorification and uplifting of his name. And we thank you, Father, that we can know this one in whose very hand is our breath. We can have a relationship with you through your son, Jesus, who loved us and gave himself for us that we might have life to the full in his name, he says. And we thank you, Father, for Jesus today. And we celebrate you through him. We come to you through him and his finished work. Because of ourselves, all of our righteousnesses, all our good deeds and things that we do are as filthy rags. But, Father, uh, you gave us someone who would cover our sin and meet with us uh, with his sacrifice and stand before your throne. And when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, God, we thank you for such wonderful truths that we find in your word. And we've asked already this morning, O oh God, that by your great spirit you would come and attend and you would meet with each heart here, that you would bless each heart and each home represented, that you'll uplift us and strengthen us and keep us and be our portion, O oh God, we pray. So receive our thanks for each one. We ask your mercies to attend and that you would bless us and keep us, Father. We thank you that the airwaves can carry this message to Sereris, over to the hospital for shut-ins. Maybe Bob Nichol Nicholson's listening this morning. We pray for him. Ask that your touch would be upon him to raise him to health and strength. If you would in your time, and just make him strong. But most of all, encourage his heart in your love and grace. We are glad to know that he believes and has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. Bless him today. We pray for Bobby as well, that you'll help and encourage her heart and Becky, uh, their family members, be with them each one. We ask, God, your grace to be upon the Zimmerman family, the loss of David and his passing. We pray, O oh God, your grace to attend and encourage uh, their hearts through the time of getting ready to say farewell. Uh, Father, we ask your blessing to be upon them this day. And Grandma Zimmerman, hold her close and keep her, Father, we ask. We pray your blessing, Father, to be upon uh, Ev's uh, uh, brother-in-law with his uh, cancer treatment, that you give grace and help there. And we're excited God, what you're doing, then Terry Kirschbaum, we just pray that you might continue to make her strong and bless her, Father, we ask. Uh, Father, we ask that you would uh, be with the little lady, Cindy Nichols, uh, that was flown out the other day. We pray your grace to be upon whatever happened there in the horse, that you'll make her strong and give the doctors wisdom and grace and help in dealing with her is our prayer. And then Jennifer's asked for help with her kids, and I ask God your grace to be upon those kids that I uh, thank you for meeting one this week, and I ask your grace to be upon them to speak to their lives and bring them back and to, to a walk in a relationship relationship with you. So receive our thanks that we can leave our loved ones in your hands, leave these things in your hands, and we ask you to bless us and meet us in this time because we come and ask your presence and your blessing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Be seated then, please. <clears throat>
We have the uh, website that uh, doesn't come on the screen. We're still working on a screen issue, and uh, we did buy a screen and uh, you know, a black one that was supposed to take white words, but it does take white words, but it just doesn't light them up any better than uh, anything we ever had. So that's the um, scenario that we have right now. But if you do have email requests, re requests and you can email uh, oneprayerchain at gmail.com, and that gives us re prayer requests, and that gives us um, a chance to just know what's going on over there. And I meant to actually call that Cindy Nichols, uh, Nichols uh, story down. I was at the hospital the other night, and they took this lady out, and her husband came in and uh, was telling us about her. So, uh, so, And then e-transfers at baptist.press for any uh, who wishing to help with the uh, finances of our place here, um, offering baskets there. Um, Glenn's put together a financial statement for us. We will have copies of that available for you for next week if you're not here at the business meeting today. Okay, any other announcements that I need to know? Okay, got to line up. When when this pulpit's here, you got to make so I can make eye contact with you. Okay, this, uh, this guy's gonna be further that way, and this guy's gonna be more this. All right, so uh, glad for that. Okay, thank you. Let's carry on then, and uh, let's sing another song. And um, this one here, "Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul." I've been waiting to sing this. I don't think we've sang it since uh, we've been had shut down. Uh, so that's mostly over a year that I can remember, at least uh, anything with with outside stuff. So heaven came down and glory filled my soul. So sit close together on your in your car seat if you have to. And 6.30, I'm sorry. Did I not write it there? The train's going to sing along with us. So uh, Wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole My sins were washed away And my night was turned to day Heaven came down and glory filled my soul Born of the Spirit with life from above Into God's family divine Justified fully through Calvary's love Oh, what a standing is mine and the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner i came talk of the offer of grace he did proffer he saved me oh praise his dear name heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross the savior made me whole my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now the hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. <clears throat> Rich is eternal and blessing supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul When at the cross the Savior made me whole My sins were washed away And my night was turned to day Heaven came down and glory filled my soul Heaven came down and glory Hey, Amen. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. What a powerful message, eh? Um, uh, you're lost in darkness, and you come to Jesus, and you hear. And uh, remember we preached about the story of Paul and Silas in prison. We talked about who was the prisoner in that story. And it wasn't Paul and Silas. They were locked up, chained down, and all those things. It was the prisoner, the guard on the outside was the prisoner. 
because he was begging, tell me what you guys got. Tell me what you got. And when God broke the doors open, he's going to kill himself because that's what you did. If your prisoner got away, uh, you were in trouble. And uh, uh, what do you guys got? I need what you got. And that's what that song is about, having Jesus come live in our hearts. Oh, what a wonderful day. And uh, good to celebrate that with a little guy this morning. Old people get to know this story. And uh, whatever, it's a wonderful truth that we find within the word of God. Um, we want to... Uh, Take and my clock is uh, that one there died. Some of the battery I put in, I must put it upside down. Uh, didn't go much past where I where I put it in. Uh, we got a few minutes. Uh, just some things for prayer. Uh, David Zimmerman was a young fella raised in our Sunday school years ago and whenever and uh, passed away in Kamloops uh, last week and uh, last Sunday Saturday night I think it was. So just pray for that family as I was in my time there in prayer. Uh, and Cindy. Uh, Bob is um, slowing down there some and uh, whatever. They're thinking he's not going to get strong enough to get out of the hospital. So pray to that end that he would. And um, Evelyn, uh, any update on, is Evelyn, there you are, is any update on your brother-in-law? Uh, like, where, where does he live? He's in BC at Victoria. Victoria? Yeah, take a bunch out, eh? Okay. We'll just pray for them and um, uh, just there. Our annual business meeting, uh, we just uh, got to go through some things. Uh, they kind of made rules that you don't even have to have them, whatever, but uh, we want to just uh, get an update and do some things. And uh, we're, we're working on, we want to get free towards starting to talk with uh, possible youth pastor potentials. And so, uh, and of which Josh here is, is uh, interested in applying. And uh, he comes with recommendation from John Mann. So uh, we're, we're glad for that. And uh, so uh, we'll be uh, doing some talking and asking for permission to get free to, to work to that end. And uh, we've got Brady and uh, helping out with this youth, and they're planning on doing some stuff even over the summer. And that, and then we'd like a report from Camp Segatau, if we can, regarding what's going on there. And uh, so that would be nice if we could hear that. And um, we'll tell you what the board's been spending money on. And just, well, I'll tell you all simple stuff, whatever. But we sent money to the Far East Broadcasting in lieu of the dinner that they normally have and raise funds. Uh, we sent them a $1,000. And um, we do have a request from Fellowship Missions. A, a, a doctor out of Kamloops wants to go to Indonesia to be uh, practice medicine. And then uh, her husband's got his Master's of Divinity, I think. And the Indonesia won't let you in unless you have uh, skills training and stuff. So he's going to be working at a school some, and she's going to be doing doctoring. So uh, they want to support. They want support to go over there. They're out of Kamloops. They have three children, and mom and dad going to Indonesia is the plan. So, and then I saw in the fellowship paper this week that they have another big push to do some stuff in Indonesia. So, uh, um, trying to raise some funds for that. So, if you got a spare bunch of money sitting around, you don't know what to do with because you can't go anywhere on COVID. Uh, if you want to give help to that situation, just be in touch with me, and we'll get you connected. Okay. Any other type of announcements like that that are things to hear about or whatever? All right. Okay. Well, glad to have you with us. Let's uh, look in the Word this morning then. And um, I was, uh, we've used this poem before, this little statement. Now, I don't hear, you young people, we're not hearing things from you. Like this poem has been around for all my life, and I think way before that. So it's an old poem, but I don't hear young people today making up these kind of statements. Now, maybe they're all on TikTok or something like that that I... There's stuff out there, and I don't know what it's about, but anyhow. Um, and so uh, maybe, that's, uh, maybe that's the issue. I'll hold my notes down with my phone. <clears throat> uh, so uh, April showers bring May flowers. May flower, or wh what brings April showers? Let's go back. March winds, now we had some of them this year, okay, brings April showers. We had showers. If you want, if you, how many like wild strawberries? Okay, up at the hospital, there's just that hillside crawling with them, just at the entrance of the hospital, the stop sign and all up. It's just crazy. as there the other day. And there's lots of them. So, okay, March, March winds bring April showers. April showers bring, we said, May flowers. And May flowers bring June brides. I got a wedding in two weeks with Ashley. Spent time with them the other night. Got the thing all laid out, whatever, like this. And, and, and June brides bring February baby carriages. <laughs> I don't know. 
whatever, eh? Um, nobody's, nobody's filled up the rest of that, is what July and all those other things get out of the story. But um, anyhow. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, I was, I was going through that thought, but I, I, I've been doing some gardening at my house. I have the thorns to prove it in my fingers. And of course, they get right in where the nerve endings are, and there they sit. And um, if you want to have a nice garden, what's the predicament you get up against? Weeds. You get weeds in them, right? If you don't want the weeds, then you got to weed them out and take care of them. And, and so uh, I've been doing some musing about Mayflowers. And Genesis 3 came to my mind. And with Genesis 3, we have the uh, uh, story there that you know well, and we'll come back to it. Uh, and uh, it tells us the story of what, wh why it's so hard to have a nice garden of Mayflowers. And so we're going to look at that in a uh, little bit of time, these, some of these verses out of Genesis 3 together this morning if we can. But I just want to ask God's help upon attending to the sharing of his word. Father, we thank you for your word that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path to get us from this dark, perishing world into your eternal presence where we have life to the full and blessing and love and uh, forgiveness of sins and covering in Jesus' righteousness. We bless you for all those things. And we ask as we look at these thoughts this morning, your spirit, by your spirit, you would draw near, encourage us and help us, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The first thing we want to find in this morning is, as we know the story in Genesis was about God made man in his image. And just after he made man in his image, we find the story of how Adam and Eve got in trouble. And the, the devil uh, was a person, uh, a being that uh, was pretty beautiful looking. And uh, Isaiah 14 seems to hint, as he portrays the description of Nebuchadnezzar, his arrogance and whatever, the devil is portrayed as this person. And he uses this personification of Nebuchadnezzar in the devil. And uh, he's this beautiful angel that fell. And it took a bunch of hosts of heaven, or a bunch of uh, angels from heaven with him and whatever. But he becomes this person. And in the Garden of Eden, he shows up as man. Is, and he's got this beautiful setting at hands. And uh, they're there. And they are uh, free to be free. They're, they're naked. And they're, they're not ashamed. And, and all those things are nice. But the devil comes along because there was one rule in the Garden of Eden. Don't touch this tree tree in the middle of that garden and so the it wasn't long that and I heard a comedian say one time he says how old how long do you think the garden lasted before Adam and Eve sinned how long since time Adam and Eve were together to before they sinned and the comedian said probably 15 and uh, 15 year olds get, get that little space I'm gonna stretch my wings and step out whatever well, that's an interesting concept whatever but we don't know the time frame but what we do know is that Adam and Eve got in trouble for sin now, the story goes on in verse 16, where this is, so after this has happened, God comes and they hid in the, in the garden, and, and God says, where are you guys? And we hid. Why? Because we're naked. Who told you you were naked? And you, you, you can find the story there in the chapter 2 by yourself. And so to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain, you will bring forth children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To the woman, he says, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. So there was a, her part in this program, her punishment was pain in childbirth, and that she would bring forth children, and it all seemed like maybe more, and whether there was a slower rate of uh, getting pregnant in the original plan, whatever, you're going to have more children, and whatever. But your desire will be for your husband. That word desire, one scholar says, it's a, it's a, it's a violent running after. It's a violent running after. Somebody said marriage is a woman being, uh, giving up the attention of many men for the unattention of one. And, and uh, it says, yet your desire, your running after will be uh, for your husband. And, and, and then he will rule. He'll be like a king over you in leading and ruling in the home. And so that was her punishment, uh, the first part of the, and so this working out of disobedience in the lives of the people in the Garden of Eden. Um, so, but the second point is where we want to spend our time this morning. And I had to use this message here, guys, because it doesn't fit for Father's Day. And what we have here is uh, the things that are hard to hear. And in verse 17, we have the first one. 
And, and um, I have three years of Hebrew, and Hebrew is a very interesting language. Um, you read it from, for you people, you read it from this way to this way. If I'm reading it, I read it this way to this way. Uh, it's backwards like that, and uh, whatever. But what I found in Hebrew, and I've told you this before, that there's certain little dots, like this, there's a word, and then there's a belly button in that word. And like, uh, the last letter's got a belly button, or another word's got a belly button in it. And the teacher would cover the board as to what that belly button means, and he said, let's read, and Bill, what's that? belly button there mean and it was a daggish leany and a daggish 40 one was obviously made it softer and the other one made the word harder and whatever and then they do that to me and what's this one here i have no clue uh you blew my mind with all those things on the board one dot changed the meaning of the word one jot remember jesus said one jot or tittle of the law and i'm reading through these things i got my glasses on because these are really fine little dots and whatever in the words and I dug that out this week and did a bunch of stuff on it. And I had some interesting findings when it came to this section here. Because uh, then it says, then to Adam, he said. The word Adam is the word man in Hebrew. The word Adam is the word man. And, and so he says, Mr. Man. Not John, not Bill. Mr. Man, I got a message for you. He's talking to the man in this story, not the woman. She's had her discussion. She's had her discipline meted out, what it is. And he says, Mr. Man, because you have listened to the voice of your wife. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> we tell guys, listen to your wife. You know, you're supposed to be, you're not this dictator ruler that just screams out orders and whatever. And uh, that's, uh, there, there's a few homes work like that. And it's not biblical. Uh, that, that loving, caring husband is, is to be that, that why that, uh, that leadership is what it's supposed to be about. And so uh, God nowhere puts this, this issue on a king that he's supposed to be this, this dictator type, hates people, just do as I say or I'll have your head. A benevolent king is, is much uh, more uh, what David was and what men like Solomon were and wise in all their approach. So to this, Mr. Man, he says, because you've listened to the voice of your wife, and then have eaten of the tree, which I commanded you, saying not to. Uh, it's interesting here when he said this, you have listened to the voice of your wife. It, the, the Hebrew is the idea. It's not just heard something and said, oh, honey, can you, uh, can you pick up eggs at the store? Okay, he's going out the door, and he, and he, gets, he remembers to get eggs. That's not the story. It's, it's like he's listened and he's considered. And, and it just, we don't know how much time frame happened. Did it happen just today? So she ate the apple today. She shared with him. And at nighttime, they're gone. Next morning, they're, or that night, they're, they're hiding in the bushes. They're fired out of the garden right away. There seems to be some time frame in the story. Because the word listen, we always say, is a word. And you hear the word here in the New Testament. We say it, it's a word pregnant with meaning. To hear meant to respond. If you didn't respond, you didn't hear. If he didn't get eggs when he was told he was going to the store, get eggs, and he didn't hear that, he doesn't get eggs. Well, uh, I left my hearing aid at home, and I didn't hear you say get eggs. And it's, but this listening is, he heard what she said, he heard the situation, and whatever, and seemingly Adam, hearing all this, uh, he listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not. And so, beloved, the, the issue is here that it's not that he, uh, she ate so much, but he listened and heard, and, and, she, and she said, the, you know, that, so this is out of that tree in the middle of the garden, Yeah. And you ate it. And, and what becomes the story is, to me, and I've argued this before, remember when Abraham went down into Egypt with Pharaoh? And he says, tell him you're my sister. Why? Because if he likes you and thinks you're my wife, he might just kill me so he can have you as a wife. And tell him you're my sister. Is that what God wants? Abraham got in trouble for doing that. And Adam here, Mr. Man, is the same guy. And, and he's, it's, it's not your place to go and eat and sin too. It's you bring it to God and say, God, that, that, because later on he says, well, it's not my fault. That woman you gave me blames God. And he says, is, is he has to go to God in the first place and say, God, that woman you gave me, she ate this apple and I don't know what to do. And it becomes God's problem, not his. But he doesn't do that. And he jumps in dead there. So he says, you have eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat. Can I give you this, brethren? And if you, how many of you studied French? A few of you. Angel, you didn't study, you studied English. <laughs> Angel studied English, okay? Uh, you studied French? All right. And, and I don't know about German and other languages, but I didn't study any other languages until I got in seminary, and that was just 
disasters in the first weeks, I've told you, and whatever. But guess what? In all this writing here, he's talking to Mr. Mr. Man when he says, and so, and you have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, Mr. Man. You're the one. And saying, you shall not eat from the tree. And and and, and this part here where he says, I commanded you saying, you shall not eat from the, you shall not eat from the tree. Uh, so he says, you shall not eat from, it's like Adam had that rule before Eve was even made. Adam had that rule before, and he had to share Eve. Okay, honey, uh, he, he, boy, look at this. He's on. Okay, this is our wonderful home, and we get to run around with nothing on. And it's wonderful. What's for, I guess there was no mosquitoes back then. I don't know. Okay, uh, they, they were part of the fall. And they, but they're running around, and we just don't touch that one tree. See that tree there? We just stay away from that tree, okay? So she, is, she knows she can't touch it. Who shared that with her? Who shared with, with Seth and Abel what was necessary for sacrifice later? Their parents. And so here we have Mr. Man is being talked to. And he says, and I, the tree, and you have eaten of the tree from which I commanded you. It doesn't say both of you. It's you singular, masculine. Mr. Man, I commanded you not to eat. Well, she off in the bushes going potty one day, and God come down and says, I want you to not touch that tree there, okay? Share that with Eve. Don't know. But it was the command that was given to Adam alone. The Hebrew says. And he says, you, single, masculine, shall not eat from it. You shall not eat from it. So then he carries on. After this, this is the things that are hard to hear. He puts the responsibility square on Mr. Adam. As I said, it seems like he gave this statement before Eve was there or somewhere when she was not around. And so he moves on to our third point. The first one of the things that are hard to hear, the fault is really dumped on Adam as, as the man. And then he makes this statement, cursed. Cursed, loathed, loathed is the ground because of you. God says, I hate the world in which I made. I loathe the world in which I made now because of you. And beloved, we see the, the wicked impact of men's uh, sinfulness on the world in which we live. Romans talks about all creation groaning together, waiting for the redemption that God's going to do. And when he burns it all up and he makes it new, there's a new heaven and a new earth. Wherein dwells righteousness, he says. God says the world is loathed. It's cursed. Cursed is the ground. Loathed is the ground because of you. In toil of it, you will eat of it all the days of your life. The word Genesis 5, 29, did I give you that one, guys? Okay. It says, this, if this is some chapters later. Uh, this is some hundreds years later. Now he called his name Noah, saying, this, is one, this one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands arising from the ground, which the Lord has cursed. So they said, let's call him Noah, because he's going to give us rest. That was his hope. But the ground was still cursed, and saw us cursed by the people of that day, a bunch of generations after Adam. Adam lived 930 years, wasn't it? And they're still talking about the ground being cursed. Cursed is the ground in Noah's day because of Mr. Man. And then, beloved, the next part of that verse says, after the ground is cursed. Can I go back, please, to uh, 5, that one back, 517. There we go, 317, I'm sorry. It says, and so you've eaten. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. Um, there's something in here. I got, okay, come in there. Uh, all right, the next point. Uh, worry, worrisome sorrow is going to be. Cursed is the ground because of you. And in toil, and you're going to eat of it all the days of your life. And beloved, that becomes part of the man's curse. Uh, I got an interesting thought coming up in the, in the next part here. But cursed is the ground because of you. And God says, I loathe the ground. And I loathe what has happened. And I loathe this situation. He could have just shut it all down and she made up her new. Because that wasn't too awful. He, heart, he spoke the world into being. Well, if he speaks into being, what's the matter? Just do it again. But he chooses to work out a plan of redemption because he told that woman, he told the devil, the seed of that woman that the devil tricked would one day bruise his head. You might bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head, Satan. He's going to crush your head. But the man's challenge, the ground is cursed because of you, and you're going to have to work hard, toil hard, 
to eat of the ground, uh, to eat of a lot, all the days of your life. And um, that eating there has, uh, seems to be there um, uh, till you die. He's going to all the days of your life. Uh, I got another part in here somewhere. Um, comes up, there's, he's, there's a field. He'll eat the fruit of the field. That'll come down. Next one here. So let's go on to the next passage here. We got the, 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 there's some serious affecting found in this, in this curse that was put upon the earth. Here comes out first thing, both thorns and thistles, it shall grow for you. Um, strangely, uh, not strangely in Hebrew, common in Hebrew, there's a form called hiphil, and when you find a hiphil word, which is different, written different ways, when you find that word, it means that a causative action has happened. A causative action is happened. That fits in here. Both thorns and thistles, it shall grow. Grow is causative. Okay? It's causative. That God says, I'm going to make thistles and whatever grow. And so I'm out there trying to weed. And I got a little, uh, I don't know if I touched an uh, Alberta rose, what's it doing over here in COVID, uh, or a raspberry, but I got little things under my fingers here so tiny, and uh, I haven't had time to dig them out yet. And they're just right there on the end of my nerves. Thorns and thistles, and they will be caused to grow for you, he says. For you. Guess who the you is, Mr. Man? Thorns and thistles shall be caused to grow for you. The word grow is a feminine form. Isn't that nice? That word is feminine. You know, uh, it, it says it's tied into the idea of uh, to bear or to, uh, uh, to bear or to, uh, yeah, seems to be tied into to uh, bear or to bring forth. This is the word to grow. So it says, so thistles and it shall bear for you. And so she's bearing, and um, men call their, their children, there's my children, my wife bore, the, bore me this child. And uh, so the grow word is a feminine word. It struck me that maybe that's why so many women are so good at growing gardens and run so many flower shops. Um, I don't know how many flower shop women get flowers from their husband. Like, well, honey, what do you need flowers for? Just give her chocolate, I guess, in that situation. Take up opening a flower shop so that your husband can bring you chocolate. I got Karen a little poster that said, fall in love, I'd rather fall in chocolate. Uh, that sits on our fridge. Fall in love, I'd rather fall in chocolate. So they run the flower shops, but the words tied into you bear, and it comes back to Mr. Man. This is growing. These grow for you, Mr. Man. Verse 18, uh, this, oh, that's it there. You, you, this by and thorns and thistles will grow for you. And now, beloved, this last part, I had to work, wrestle through that some. No, back to 18, please. Um, it says, uh, You shall eat the, the, the fruit of the, the grass of the field. It says, And you will eat the plants of the field. Oh, well, what's that about? What's the matter with eating in fields? Well, when you run around the garden, guess what? You didn't have to go out and plant and till and do all that stuff. You just went and picked some grapes. You picked some cherries. You picked an apple. You picked a banana. You want whatever. And uh, you got cranberries in case your kidneys are hurting and whatever. And you just had to go pick and dine. You see the garden shows they have the things and they're talking about doing one at six miles. Uh, you pick. You go in and you just pick. They're trying to look like Eden. That was the idea, but not now. You got to go out and plant yourself a field. And you got to work hard just to have enough food to make things work together. You will eat the plants of the field. You're going to get into big time operation here now because Mr. Man, he says, this is your punishment for listening, considering it seems not just a flippant little thing, oh, you heard she did what she told you, and, and you, you're in trouble. No, it was a serious issue. And so he says in verse 19 now, by the sweat of your face, you will eat bread till you return to the ground. By the sweat of your face, the word sweat has the idea of a strong concordance says it's to ooze. Just ooze. Just sweat oozes out of you. You're working hard. This is oozing out of you, this sweat. <laughs> I thought it's interesting. Uh, I got a cute little picture on my phone. You wanted to have a cute little picture. Um, uh, Reese is just freaked by it. She's just, oh, whatever. A baby platypus. Just Google baby platypus. The cutest little thing. And the little guy. And they're a marsupial, the mammal that is found in an egg. His mom lays eggs. Out comes this little marsupial baby. And she's called a mammal. But the way she nurses the little guys is she oozes sweat into little folds. And the little guys go into little folds and lap it up. And that's how they eat as little mammals. 
Uh, the little, they, it's like in some way, God's got a sense of humor just to freak out the evolutionists. He crossed a duck with a beaver. <laughs> it's a duck bill platypus. Post. It looks like a beaver, a beaver tail, and a little duck face on it, whatever. And it's a mammal. And God's got this sense of humor. But this, the sweat oozes out of her, and the little guys just draw this sweat, and that's how she feeds them. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread. It's going to ooze off you. You're going to work hard. And so the idea of having May flowers is when the sun starts to come out, the days are longer, it's warm, and you want to have those flowers, you've got to work hard to have them. I found that I was forced. I was digging in my garden, and I found some plants that I thought I would just pull them off or whatever. They, they'd quit growing or whatever. And then I dug some of them up, and they got little bulbs. And then I dug those guys up last year. But any little piece, like quack grass, any little piece that was left in there grew a new shoot, grew a new plant. When I'm finding my Hebrew here, God says, I curse the ground, Mr. Man, because of you. I loathe the ground now, and you've got to work hard by the sweat of your face. So the other morning, I got up early and mowed in my garden and had a big wheelbarrow full of dirt that had that stuff in it before and another big pile of it and ice cream bucket at a time. I dumped it, and anything that looked like it was alive got thrown out. It took me about an hour. I got it all done. By the sweat of your face, you'll eat bread. If you want to die and you want to have your food, it's going to come from the sweat of your face. And then he says, how long is this going to be until you return to the dust of the ground? Because dust is what you are. There's an important verse to remember when he says, dust is what you are. Somebody was on a little plane one time, a couple of guys, one was a comedian, and the pilot comes on and says, guys, we lost one of our engines of the two. And so he says, we still have enough power to fly to the uh, air tour destination. So we'll keep on going. So the guy says, the comedian, how far do you think we'll get if the second engine goes? He says, oh, we'll make it at least to the crash site. <laughs> we'll make it to the crash site. You're going to work by the sweat of your brow until you meet the crash site. Because from it you were taken, dust. And you, for your dust, and dust you are, and you shall return. Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. By the sweat of your face you're going to work and accomplish that situation. And so in Romans 12, verse 3, we have this written. For through the grace given to me, Paul says, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think. Why? Because Paul knows by the grace of God and the Spirit of God, you're nothing but dirt. You're made out of dust. You're made out of ground. I cursed the ground, but that's what I was already making you out of. Because he took the dust and he made Adam. And he says, you're, you're made from dust, you go back to dust. Don't think of yourself so highly. That's a problem with people. They think so highly of themselves. Well, I, I deserve better. I'm better than that. I, I deserve this and my arrogance and whatever. You think more, don't think more highly than you ought to think. But to think and have sound judgment as God has allotted to each man the measure of faith. Don't think more highly of yourself. You're really just dirt. So don't be so high on yourself. And that's a good segue to our next point because the last point is this. The benevolence of the dis to, dis benevolence to disobedience. Benevolence to disobedience. Beloved, that's our gospel. Sorry, I missed that. Could you say it again, please? Siri, go away. Um, benevolence to the disobedience. That's our gospel. That's our gospel. It's not people, get yourself perfect and come to church and, and, and we'll sing nice hymns and songs about somebody who was perfect and, and nothing ever happened to him. Our gospel is what? That you come with your degradation. Jesus paid the penalty for your sin and you can find forgiveness, you can find health and healing and help in life, whatever, when you come to Jesus. And God is benevolent to the disobedient because I'd have been dead a long time ago if he wasn't. You'd have been dead a long time ago if he wasn't. Romans 5, 20, look what he says there. The law came in that the transgression would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. 
And so, beloved, I'm, I'm thinking of this verse here when, when I'm working in the garden. It's, the law came in so that the transgression could be, would increase. He says the law was a schoolmaster to drive us to Jesus. And I'm out there working in my garden. How come, God? I had to stoop, beloved. I, I, I'm not happy to say this. I had to stoop to using some Roundup on some of those weeds. I know some of you are here who say, oh, that guy's a heathen. Um, I'm not a big supporter. I don't use that stuff. But I had to get these weeds to try to kill some of the roots that are on my neighbor's fence. He said, kill the whole lot of you. didn't care. Um, the, 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 the law came in that transgression would increase. And we're fighting these things. But the law is a schoolmaster to drive us to Christ. Say, God, I can't get to heaven with your law keeping your works. What do I do? You've got to have my son Jesus. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So where sin abounded, grace abounded more. Because God's benevolent in our lost estate. He doesn't wait for us to get per Verse 21 of Romans 5 says this. He says, so that as sin reigned in death. And that's the plan of sin. That's the plan of the devil. That's the plan of the world. Well, I don't want to admit to Jesus I'm a sinner. Your body wants to take you to hell. And so, so that sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that's what God wants to do when Bill Evans came one day to the foot of the cross. By myself in my room. They said, Jesus, I've been messing. And you know it. Because he poked me like in the chest. You call yourself a Christian. And you're doing that. He says, as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And since that time I found that on that day when I asked Jesus to come into my life and change me and make me a child of his, guess what happened, I find? He gave me the righteousness of Jesus. He who knew no sin became sin for me that I could be given the righteousness of God put on my account. Do I deserve it? No. Do I live up to all that I have? No. Do I fail? Yes. But my God is benevolent. When I trip up and fall down, skin my knee, picks me up, dust off the dust, puts a bandit on the owie, and says, carry on. His righteousness is on me. Where sin abounded, grace did much more down. Sin wants to reign to death, but so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life in Jesus Christ. That's the benevolence of our Father. Genesis 3, 20 and 21, as we close here, the man called his wife's name Eve. Here's a bouquet, a bouquet, if you wish, for women. The way God lays out the order of the scriptures, because all scriptures are inspired by God. The, the jots and the tittles, the little dots and all those things in the Hebrew and the Greek and whatever like that, all those things are orchestrated by God. And after he said all this thing about there, he says, now the man called his wife's name Eve. Because she was the mother of all living. And he stops to bless women in the struggle and whatever. And, and so we joke, and, and hopefully it's only joking in the hearts and lives of men that say, well, you women fouled up in touching that fruit in the garden. Well, the Bible says, guys, learn this one. He's talking to Mr. Man. You listened. It's your fault. And he said, Romans 7, Paul says, in Adam, everybody die. The man called his wife's name Eve. She was the mother of all living. We touched on this recently, that DNA is now proved. All the world that we have has come from one woman. DNA proves it. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Verse 21, as we close, says this. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and Eve, Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. An animal had to die, became the new program, so that... Adam and Eve's nakedness, of which they were embarrassed, could be covered. The Lord God made garments of skin, so some animals had to die, and his wife was clothed, he and his wife were clothed with them. God's benevolence towards our disobedience. He wants to clothe us in righteousness, the righteousness of his son Jesus. We have no righteousness of our own. We can only come to God and have the righteousness that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. I trust our hearts will be encouraged with that. And um, he wants us to be covered. So our closing hymn is going to take us to that discussion in uh, one of the verses there. And uh, what's the title of the song there? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Glenn, will you dismiss us in prayer in there when you're... Finish, and we have. I don't think I've been hearing your singing voice. If you would, oh, 
Everybody's got the number there, what it is? You got it there? Okay, here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Rest in his righteousness alone, for less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Did you catch that last second last verse, or the last verse, I guess? Uh, dressed in his righteousness alone. I stand dressed in his righteousness alone, not my own. All my righteousnesses are filthy rags to God. You need righteousness that covers us in Jesus. Come on, Uncle Glenn. Good. Thank you. Close us off in prayer. Father God, we, we know that uh, even though the curse is applied to all men, there will come a day when the curse is lifted. We will be living in your blessing and uh, in our rest, our eternal rest. And so we just look forward to that day. We can celebrate that already because the kingdom is at hand. It is, it is near. And so, Lord, we, we just thank you for that truth and the encouragement this morning. Go with each one of us in each uh, heart and home and family that's here and at, at home listening as well. Bless our, our meeting coming up here, the business meeting, and uh, that you would just provide wisdom and guidance, um, and your spirit would just be present to, to lead our church to make an impact for you and your kingdom here in our community in Chetwind. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I need to get a little screenshot here, a shot here of airplane mode is off. <laughs>